All right, so this is our Honors Chemistry Section 11.1 .1 lesson video, and this is going to be Part 1. And so in Part 1, we're going to start talking about reactions. So in a chemical reaction, the reactants are written on the left of the arrow, and the products are written on the right. And then the arrow that separates them is the yield sign. So you start with reactants, and they react to produce products. So if the question ever refers to the product, you shouldn't ever be looking at this side of the reaction. All right, um, so what we're going to learn in this video is how to write reactions. And then in the second part of this video, we'll learn how to balance equations. So some things you'll see in reactions is you'll see the yield sign. That means it yields or that's pointing to the products. Sometimes you will see a double arrow. That is a reversible reaction, and eventually you'll learn about something called equilibrium. Sometimes you'll see little letters after a substance, and so those indicate the state of matter. So S means solid, L means liquid, G means gas, and then AQ means aqueous. Aqueous just means it's dissolved in water. So like there's a difference if I start with solid salt, like NaCl solid, or if I start with NaCl aqueous. That means it's salt and water. And then any time you see something written above the yield sign, that is a catalyst. So in this case, platinum is acting as a catalyst. If you specifically see a triangle over the yield sign, that means heat is a catalyst. So heat is causing that reaction to occur. So these are just some things that you'll see or need to write in the reactions we're about to learn about. But first of all, let's talk about what a catalyst is, just in case you didn't already know. So a catalyst is just a substance that speeds up a reaction, but it's not used up in the reaction. So since it's neither a reactant nor a product, that's why its formula is written above the arrow. So it's just present to help the reaction occur. And it does that by lowering the activation energy. So for example, say this is how much energy we normally need to get a reaction going. Well, when we add a catalyst, it provides a different way for, or a different mechanism for the reaction to occur, which requires less activation energy, so that can allow the reaction to happen faster. Sometimes a catalyst also just provides a location for the reactants to react with one another. So the first thing we're going to talk about are called word equations. So to write a word equation, you just write the names of the reactants and products in a sentence form. Okay, so what I've tried to do here is color code everything so you can follow what I'm talking about. So for example, here's the chemical equation, and then here would be the word equation. So H2 is just hydrogen. Remember, diatomics don't have any weird dye in their name. Like, we don't need to call this dihydrogen. The diatomics just have their normal elemental name. So this is just hydrogen, and because it has the G, I know that it's hydrogen gas. Now, notice I didn't say anything about this two in front either. This is referred to as a coefficient. Those aren't important in a word equation. So hydrogen gas, whenever you see a plus, you just put and, so and. And then O2 is just oxygen, so I put oxygen gas because I have the G right here. When you get to the yield sign, you can say yields, produces, react to form, whatever you want to say. Um, and then we have H2O, which of course we can just call that water, and it's in the liquid form, okay? Because you can't have steam, water in the gas form, so it's very important that you write the states of matter in your word equation, all right? Um, now the hardest part that you have with this is giving things the correct name. So we learned naming back in chapter nine. So if you struggle with naming, you may need to go back and watch the chapter nine videos again. Okay, this one was super easy because I just used two elements and water. But we'll look at some more difficult ones in the next couple of slides. So it says write the sentence that describes this chemical reaction. All right, so I'm going to write it kind of low because my answer is going to come up about right here. Mine's all color coded, and I'm just writing in a black marker right now. So I'll try not to write on my answer. So I start with Na. Na is sodium, and it is a solid. So I'm going to start with solid sodium. And y'all, don't stress over whether you're supposed to call it solid sodium or sodium solid. You can call it either one. I'm just going to call it the one that sounds better. All right, for my plus, I'm going to write and. So, so far, I gave you an easy one. It was just an element. I gave you another easy one. H2O is just water. It's liquid water in this case. So, and liquid water. 
Then I'm at my arrows, so I can put yields, produces, react to form. I wrote react to form on the previous slide, so I'll do produces this time. Produces. Now we got some naming happening here. So in this one, this is probably the only one that might be a little hard to name because this is also just an element. So remember, when we're naming, it's what the first element is. Is it a regular metal, a transition metal, a non-metal, or hydrogen? Sodium is just a regular metal, so we're just going to name the first element and add I to the second one unless it's a polyatomic ion, which in this case it is. So Na is sodium, OH is a polyatomic ion, it's hydroxide. So it's sodium hydroxide, and it happens to be aqueous. So I'm going to put produces aqueous sodium hydroxide. Then I have a plus. So I'm going to write and. Now remember, diatomics, they just have their normal elemental name. So this is hydrogen, and it's in the gas form. So and hydrogen gas. Now again, this one was pretty easy because it did have two elements and water. So this is really the only part you could have missed, but we'll up the difficulty in a minute. Okay, so here it is all color-coded. So solid sodium and liquid water react to form, I chose produces, it doesn't matter, aqueous sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas, just like that. Okay, so like I said, the only thing that's going to hold you back on these is if you're not good at naming, which many of you struggle with. Alright, so let's look at another one. So maybe pause the video and try this one on your own, and then we'll see what you do. And now the important thing about this is, remember, there are a lot of names on this. So even if you only get part of it right, that's a good start. Okay, so I'll assume you've paused it and you're ready for us to look at it together. So again, I'm going to kind of write down here because I know my answer will come up right here. All right, so just in case my handwriting's too sloppy. Okay, so I need to name this. So first I need to look. Does it start with a regular metal, a transition metal, a non-metal, or hydrogen? It starts with hydrogen, so it's going to be an acid. Okay, so it starts with hydrogen. It is an acid. SO4 is sulfate. So the thing you have to remember is for acids, 8 goes to ic. So this is going to be sulfuric acid. It is aqueous. So I'm going to start with aqueous sulfuric acid. Okay, so see a lot of you would call that hydrogen sulfate. Okay, you got to name it in its acid form. So aqueous sulfuric acid, I'm at plus, so I'll put and. Next, well, what is BA? Is it regular metal, transition metal, non-metal, or hydrogen? BA is just a regular metal. So we're just going to name it and add I to the other part. So BA is barium, Cl is chlorine, so I'm going to call it chloride. So this is barium chloride, and it is aqueous. So I'm going to put and aqueous. Barium chloride. Alright, we have our yield sign. So remember, you can put yields, produces, reacts to form. So I'm just going to put react to form. Okay, here I have barium again. So BA is still a regular metal. So I'm just going to name the metal and add I to the non metal unless it's a polyatomic ion, which it is. So I'm just going to call this barium sulfate. And it's a solid. So react to form solid barium sulfate. And again, if the naming part is throwing you off, you need to go back to chapter 9 videos. There's my plus, so I'm going to put and. And then I'll look at what this starts with. Is it regular metal, transition metal, non-metal, or hydrogen? It is hydrogen. So I need to name it like an acid. Well, Cl is normally called chloride. And so remember, for acids, if it ends in I, we call it hydroblanchic acid. So it becomes hydrochloric acid, and it is aqueous. So we put and aqueous hydrochloric acid. So see, if you struggle with naming, then this is really four naming questions all combined in one. So that's why a lot of you struggle with these. If you're really good at naming, these are super easy. You're just saying what you see, and you just need to tell me is it aqueous, solid, liquid, or gas, and I tell you what they are. 
So really, if you struggle with word equations, it means you're actually struggling with naming, which is a chapter nine skill. Okay, so again, I cannot stress enough. I kind of kept stressing uh, that you need to be able to go from grams to moles in the chapter 10 videos. Well, in this one, I'll keep stressing that you need to know how to do naming. Now, sometimes I'll ask it in this form, where I give you the chemical equation and you write the sentence. Sometimes I'll give you the word equation and ask you to write the chemical equation. So let's look at how that works. So it says, write the chemical equation for the following reaction. Hydrochloric acid and solid sodium hydrogen carbonate react to produce aqueous sodium chloride, water, and carbon dioxide. Hint, acids will always be aqueous unless otherwise stated. So what I want you to notice is I didn't give you the state of matter for everything. If I don't give you the state of matter, that means it's the normal or the usual state of matter. And so this is why I'm giving you this hint. We all know in the chemistry world that aqueous is an, a an acid is aqueous unless otherwise stated. So this is me giving you that hint. So see, it says hydrochloric acid. All right, so I know it's an acid, so it starts with H. H has a positive one charge. Hydrochloric means it has chloride attached to it, which is Cl, which is negative one. So I don't need any extra subscripts. Again, you just need to know from now on, unless I specify otherwise, that that will be aqueous. So I'll put my little aqueous. Then it says and, so I'll put a plus, solid sodium hydrogen carbonate. Well, sodium is Na, has positive one charge. Hydrogen carbonate is HCO3, that's on your polyatomic ion sheet. It has a negative one charge. So I don't need any additional subscripts, and it told me it's a solid, so I'll put a little S. React to produce, so I'll put my arrow, aqueous sodium chloride. Well, sodium is Na, has a charge of positive one, chloride Cl, a charge of negative one, so I don't need any additional subscripts, and it told me it is aqueous. Then we have water, and if it doesn't specify the form of water, we can assume it's a liquid. Okay, if it's gonna be a gas, it will call it steam. If it's going to be a solid, it would call it ice. And, so I'll put another plus sign, carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide, O2, and then its natural state is a gas. So since it didn't specify the state of matter, I can assume it's in its natural state of a gas. So when I give you the sentence, sometimes I will leave out states of matter that you should just know. When you write the sentence to me, though, I'm not going to assume you know any of them. So you need to put all the states of matter. All right, and so that's what this one would look like. If you want to see the, oh, I wrote where my answer will be, so let me erase mine and I'll show you the um, color-coded version. And what I want you to notice is you don't actually need to show me any of the charges. I just show them so you can see where I'm getting them from. They are actually there because once they bond, those charges cancel. All right, so maybe pause the video and you try this one. These might be a little tricky for some of you because they have the Roman numeral. All right, so I'll assume you paused it and tried it, and let's look at it together. So it says solid iron 3 hydroxide. I'm going to write it down here so I don't cover my answer. So iron is Fe. The Roman numeral 3 tells me the charge of iron, so it's iron plus 3. Hydroxide is a polyatomic ion, it's OH negative, so I need 3 hydroxides. Now remember, hydroxide does not already have a subscript, but if you need to add one, it's still a polyatomic ion, so it still needs to go in parentheses. And then it told me it's a solid. So solid iron 3 hydroxide is heated to form. So I'm forming something, but it says it's heated to form. So in other words, my heat is a catalyst. So I need to put my triangle. It's heated to form solid iron 3 oxide. So iron is Fe. The Roman numeral means the charge, plus 3. Oxide is O with a negative 2 charge, so I need to cross my charges, 2 and 3, to make it positive 6, negative 6, and it told me it is a solid. And, so I'll put my plus, water. Well, water is H2O. Since it didn't specify the state of matter, I will assume it is a liquid. All right, and so here is our answer. So, ho oh, I still kind of wrote on it. So, hopefully you didn't forget the triangle. Hopefully you didn't get, forget to put the OH in parentheses. Those are the two most common things I see people miss on this. Well, for people who even have any idea what to do. All right, so that was word equations. So you need to make sure that if I give you the sentence, you can write the equation. Or if I give you the equation, you can write the sentence. Again, if you're having trouble with writing formulas or the naming, you need to go back to Chapter 9. And we also did writing formulas in Chapter 7.